Hello everybody and welcome to the vloggy thing, the series where I ramble on about whatever I feel like at the time. And for the third time today I'm recording this, I've been futzing with the camera settings. And the first two times I was futzing with the camera settings, I it outputted really, really poor quality video. Actually, mildly question how good the quality of video this is going to be. Uh, mostly because I'm sure you can see the warping around it because uh, I'm using a GoPro Hero 3 as my camera because it just seems to be a better camera than all the others that I've tried so far. Um, and it's got a fisheye thing going for it because it's really designed to be used in sports and in high speeds and where you wouldn't notice that kind of thing and in really distant stuff, far away stuff. Uh, so you wouldn't really notice the fisheye problem but obviously, as you can see there and there, it's definitely a problem up close. Um, but if I turn down the field of view, it's like using less of the sensor. And it's turning into a really shitty quality image. So I cranked it up as high as I could. Uh, a little disappointed. I did like the medium narrow view, but uh, uh, it's just not working. Anyway, so let's actually go on to the stories I'm trying to tell, and let's see how much worse they get. You would think that telling the story three times in a row, it would be easier to tell said story, but uh, in reality, it's not. It's getting harder every time I do it. But anyway, so uh, the first thing, uh, first story I want to say uh, started over the summer. I was at my dad's house. We were working on the van. And I had brought my toolkit. I had a big, giant, 60-pound metal toolkit that uh, I carry around with me when I have to do work like that. And I had it in my Jeep because we were working on the van in the driveway, and the Jeep was also parked in the driveway. So it was, like, right there. So there was no point in getting the tools out at the time. And uh, since there was no point in getting the tools out at the time, there was also no point in, like, winding up the windows or locking the door or anything like that. So I went off, started working on that, and I'm like, oh, I need this tool. It's in the toolkit. I'll go get it. So I went over to the Jeep, pulled on the handle, and the door didn't open. It was locked. Uh, so apparently, just out of sheer force of habit, I'd lock the door. Now, on the Jeep, basically what I do is I'll open the door. I, like, pull the handle. With, the elbow, with my elbow, I'll push on the door to open it, and then just reach up with one of my fingers and lock the door. Simple as that. It's for sheer force of habit. Been doing it for years. And uh, apparently I had done that, just out of force of habit. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm wearing my work gloves. I don't want to pull off my work gloves, fish into my pocket to get out the key, and then unlock the door. So I just reached in the open window and opened the door. And a car alarm went off. Four years Four years I had this Jeep. Didn't know it had a car alarm. Wasn't in the documentation anywhere. Wasn't in the advertisements when I bought it. I specifically asked the dealer if it had a car alarm, and the dealer said, no, it does not. Well, apparently it does. Uh, totally didn't know it. Uh, so first off, I thought I had accidentally hit the panic button because there is a panic button on the little electronic fob thingy that I have. Uh so I reach into my pocket, I pull out the key, and I push the panic button. Well, it doesn't turn off the alarm. It actually turns on a second alarm. So there's two, alarm going, two alarms going, both on the horn, and they're different cadences. So, like, the one alarm is honking slower than the other alarm. It's really weird. So I push the panic button again, the second alarm turned off. And then I pushed on lock on the door, and the first alarm game turned off. And I'm like, well, I'll be damned. I have a car alarm. Four years I've had this car. Didn't know I had a car alarm. Hmm. So yesterday, I learned something else about my car that I find absolutely terrible. It was up at Staples. Needed a 16-port gigabit switch. So I went up to Staples because they were the only people in the area that actually had one in stock. And I didn't have time to order online, so... Almost dropped my microphone. Uh, so 
went up to Staples to pick up the 16 port switch. And uh, so pulled in the parking lot, opened the door, locked it at the door. I want to reemphasize this. It locks at the door. Okay. So it's been a couple of months, obviously, since I had the incident in the driveway where I learned that I had a car alarm. But I had been using the car for many years before that. So it's still a sheer force of habit to just lock the door at the door. So I lock the door, I go into the staples, I grab the switch, come back out, go to open the door, push the button on the fob, nothing happens. Push the button on the fob again, nothing happens. I'm like, hmm, battery must have died in the fob. I've had this thing for over four years now. Never replaced the battery, so I figured the battery in the fob died. So I put the key in, turned it, unlocked the door, opened the door, car alarm went off. So I started jamming on the button over and over and over again, and finally the car alarm turned off. So I'm like, well, that's a terrible thing. Conveniently, Staples is right beside a Target. And as far as I can think of, outside of going down several blocks to Battery Plus, which is on the wrong side of a divided highway for me, um... Target was the only place that I could think of to get batteries, at least the watch size batteries, or the fob size battery in this case. Uh, so I went to Target, I picked up a new set of batteries, replaced the battery in the fob, and then went about my day. Didn't seem to have a problem with it. It opened the door after I got in, out of Target, so it didn't seem to have too much of a problem. So I went off, and I went to the grocery store, which is a little farther down the plaza. And I get out, I sh lock the door again at the door, because, well, there is no on button on the on the fob. There's lock, and there's unlock, and there's panic, and there's a fourth button that actually opens the, the back of the Jeep, the glass part of the trunk. Uh, the, the glass part of the gate opens up separately from the actual gate itself. Uh, but, so there's there's no alarm on button on the key fob. So I lock the door at the door again, close the door, go off into Coons, the grocery store in our area. I do my grocery shopping. I come back. I have a cart full of stuff. I push the button on the key, and nothing happens. Push the button again. Nothing happens. And I'm sitting here debating what I'm going to do if I can't get into my Jeep. And it's starting to rain because uh, this was right before it's like we had another three, four inches of snow, and it was still kind of warm outside, so it was raining. Uh, so it's raining on my groceries. I'm debating on what to do. I'm like, well, maybe I'm wrong in my theory. Maybe this car isn't as stupid as I think it is. So I put the key in, open up the door, and the car alarm goes off. It's like, God damn it. So I'm futzing around. For five minutes, this car alarm in the parking lot is going off, and I'm sitting there trying to futz with the key, banging it up against the side of the car and finally get it to turn off. So apparently the key itself broke. So I learned yesterday that I have a car alarm that will turn itself on, needs no prompting for me whatsoever to turn on. It will turn itself on, but it will only turn off with one button that is completely and 100% reliant on a battery and working technology. That strikes me as stupid. I mean, like, extremely stupid. Like, okay, if you have a car alarm, like a real car alarm that actually has a dedicated alarm on button and alarm off button, yes, okay, that's reliant on a fob, that's reliant on a battery. But the on button is also reliant on said battery. So if you get out of your car, you push the on button on the fob, and it turns out that the fob battery died... Well, it's not going to turn the alarm on. You can still open the door with the key. But mine will turn itself on. It doesn't require external input. So, so yeah, it's just kind of ragingly stupid, in my opinion. I'm hoping... I have yet to look through the manual. I did read the manual for the Jeep. When, after I first got it, I did sit down and I actually read the manual... But when it came to the part that was labeled for models with an alarm, I skipped it because I don't have an alarm. 
So I've got to read that section again, see if there's a way to turn that off, because that is a terrible idea. Um, the second I got home, I got out the spare fob that I have, replaced its battery, made sure it was a good battery, went outside, make sure it actually worked, and it did work. So I have a good key fob now, so I've got to, I've just got to dig into it and see if I can turn that off, because, yeah, I don't like that idea. I mean, it's nice that it exists, and I have a car alarm that I didn't know existed, and it might help on my insurance, because when I signed up for insurance, they asked if I had an alarm, and I said no, because, well, I didn't. At least I didn't think I did at the time. Uh, so yeah, maybe that'll help out later. But uh, no, I want to disable it. Hopefully I can. I don't know if I can. Anyways, second story is a little bit more upbeat, a little bit happier. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I sold a couple of computers of mine. Uh, got into a little money because of it. Uh, I sold an old server I had, a Core i7, 24 gig of RAM, really honking, beefy server. It ran my entire network for the longest time. File server, domain controller, uh, uh, database server, Minecraft server. Actually ran a whole bunch of different things on my network. Uh, but over time, I started to need that stuff less and less. Like uh, originally, I had a roommate. And we would, I would share files with him. We, I had media servers set up. Or yeah media PC set up and all that kinds of stuff. And I had a central repository for all the shared files and it was shared security and all that fun stuff. It was really easy to do it that way. So I did. And, uh, but he's moved out long ago and I've started to need an, a secondary server less and less over time. I don't use Windows for my media centers anymore. I've been using Raspberry Pis, and recently I've actually started going with Chromecast because it's just easier. Uh, plus the overwhelming fact that uh, I've needed my Raspberry Pis for other projects, and I haven't gotten any of them back yet. Yeah, well, that's my fault. The one of one of them sitting on my desk at the office, waiting for a purpose now, because its original purpose is long since done. But. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to, or I haven't remembered to bring it back yet. But I've been, I've switched over to Chromecast because I can just control it from the phone. I can use Plex. It's just, it's easier. So that's what I've been going with. So I don't need a dedicated server for all this stuff. I don't need a domain anymore because the vast majority of stuff that I have won't connect to a domain. It, it can't join a domain. Chromecast can't join a domain. The Raspberry Pis can't join a domain. Well, I guess it probably might have been able to, but I was using Raspy MC and that, yeah, I wasn't putting that on the domain. Most because I don't know how, I don't know Linux. Um, so, yeah, so I didn't need the server anymore, so I sold it. I also sold an old Media Center PC that I had. It wasn't that powerful, but it was still a good workhorse PC. It's a Core i5, it had uh, 4 gig of RAM. So it was a workhorse PC, so it was good for a workstation. So I sold both of them, got about $2,000 for them. Yeah, I got a deal on that. Uh, so I went out, and I decided, well, why don't I build a new PC? Why don't I upgrade my PC? Uh, so I started looking out. I was poking around on Tiger Direct. I was poking around on Newegg. Um, never going back to Tiger Direct. Don't remember why, but I'm not going back to Tiger Direct. But uh, so I was poking around Newegg. And I figured, just for shits and giggles, let's put together my dream PC. Just to see how much it would cost. So we're talking octa-core processors, Core i7 Extreme Edition, which has eight cores, two threads per core, so Windows sees it as having 16 cores. Fun stuff. Uh, 24 gig of RAM, because originally I thought that I was going to integrate a gaming rig and a server so I would need the extra RAM. So 24 gig of RAM, a big honking GTX 980 video cards, two of them in SLI, motherboard that obviously can support all that, uh, power supply that can support all that, all that fun stuff. So final price was $4,500. <laughs> Little outside of my price range at the time. So I'm like, you know what? That's just ridiculously expensive. I'm just going to upgrade my current PC. 
because after after I did all that, I did a little research on my current motherboard and figured out that my current motherboard has two PCI Express X16 slots. Uh, PCI Express 3 X16 slots. Didn't know that at the time, but uh, apparently I had <laughs> apparently I had the technology that I already wanted. So I'd be like, yeah, may as well just upgrade instead of screwing around with buying a new one. So I bought the two video cards. So I do ha now have two GTX 980s in SLI. I bought a brand new monitor which is an Acer uh, G-Sync monitor. Now, if you don't know what a G-Sync monitor is, basically it's an adaptive refresh rate. So if you've ever noticed that you're playing a game on your monitor and there's like this line where it's like the above the line, it's like one frame ahead of below the line, it's called tearing. And I'm sure any gamer out there just went, no shit, Sherlock. But... Yeah, if you don't know, that's, it's called tearing, and it's caused with a problem with the video card outputting a frame rate that doesn't sync up with the refresh rate of the monitor. Uh, most monitors are based on 30 hertz. Uh, so it's a 30 hertz monitor, it's a 60 hertz monitor, uh, 120, 240, that kind of thing. But they're all very static. Uh, there are also like there's like PAL, which is based on 24. Oh, that's, no, that's uh, Cinema something or other. Uh, they're based on 24, which is why uh, 120 and 240 exist, so that the, it can line up. So to d properly display the image, you have to have an even, even amount of frames per frame. So if you have a 24... Uh, 24 frame per second movie and you have a 240 hertz monitor there is 10 hertz for every one frame so it lines up perfectly but if you're running on a 30 hertz monitor and it's 24 the division doesn't work very well and you end up with tearing or frame stuttering and it just it doesn't look as good which is why they started coming out with the 120s and 240 hertz monitors so it all lines up and then obviously 3d and all that fun crap um but g-sync is slightly different basically it's not limited to a base 30 frame rate so it can adjust so it doesn't have to sit at 30 it can sit at 32 or it can sit at 28 or 24 as necessary it can adjust you know and apparently it can go pretty high there's actually a little red bar that you can enable which will tell you your current running refresh rate. And I've had it running pretty good. I've got it got I've gotten it up to uh, 62 frames per second. And it was slightly over quarter of the way up that up the bar. So I would assume that this thing goes up pretty seriously high when it comes to refresh rate. Uh, but the real fun with it is it's a 4K monitor. Uh, not the true 4K that's like 4096 horizontally. I want to emphasize this. The, when they're talking about 2K and they're 4K, they're talking about horizontally, not vertically, like uh, 720 or 1080 or 1440. Those are all vertical measurements. Uh, 4K and 2K are all horizontal measurements. So it's not as big as you would think it is. Uh, if you're upgrading from 1080 to 4K, you're not actually getting four times the vertical resolution you are getting four times the resolution as 1080 but it's the entire thing so like on my monitor right now which is uh, it's twice whatever 1920 is um 3840 i think i i can't do math on the fly very easily but uh i can actually take four 1080p videos put them on my screen without them overlaying okay that's how big this screen is that's how high the resolution this screen is the screen however is 28 inches and you guys saw my previous monitor big giant 42 inch 1080p tv well now i've gone from big giant 42 inch 1080p tv down to a 28 inch 4k monitor so <laughs> 
I'm opening up 720p content. It's this big on the bloody screen. <laughs> Little tiny itty bitty thing. And it confuses the hell out of me because it's got a hub built into it. It just turned itself on. Um, like when it goes into standby, it turns off all of the power to the monitor except the little light telling me it's in standby. But it also turns off the power to the hub. So when it comes back on, Windows goes boop, boop, boop to let me know that it reconnected itself. It's a little silly. Um, so anyways, I fired up Minecraft for the first time in a long time just to see what it would look like on a 4K screen. I had completely forgotten that in windowed mode, it defaults to a little tiny itty bitty resolution. It's like 640 by 480 or something like that, really tiny resolution. So when it popped up on the screen for the first time, it was like an inch wide. <laughs> I'm like, ugh, that's terrible. I'm like, how can I fix that? How can I make it so that it actually defaults to a reasonable resolution? And I used to do that before uh, I used to use a program called Sizer. Worked great. Basically what it is, is you know how if you take your mouse to the lower right corner and it'll change to the two directional arrows so you can click and drag and resize the window? Well, if you right clicked with this software, it would bring up a menu and you could click on a resolution and it would change the window to that resolution. It would just do it automatically for you. That's actually how I recorded for the longest time. I would use that program, right click, set it to 1280 by 720. It would resize the window to 1280 by 720. And I know that when I hit record, it would output a video that's 1280 by 720. And I tried really hard to make sure that I had the 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio because that's what YouTube runs at, 16 by nine. So I tried really hard to make sure I didn't have the uh, pillar bars or the letterboxing. Um, so I tried to do that here. Now, recently I upgraded to Windows 8, and I did that because of the NVIDIA Shield that I showed off in the last video. Um, Windows 7, it should, the, the, the game streaming thing should work on Windows 7. In my case, it didn't, and it appears to be an extremely common problem that the game streaming for the NVIDIA Shield does, doesn't work. Uh, but for shits and giggles, I upgraded to Windows 8. Um, there were other problems that I wanted to take care of. I have USB 3.0 problems, and I've heard that Windows 8 works with USB 3.0 better than Windows 7 does. Um, and then there were a couple other things that I, you know, Windows 8 should be taken care of better. And it is. It is running a little bit better. Uh, the USB problem kind of went away and a couple other problems went away, and the NVIDIA Shield streaming works, uh, as you saw in the previous video. Uh, that's because I upgraded to Windows 8. Once I upgraded to Windows 8, everything just started working, which blows my mind because it's Windows 8. <laughs> Windows 8 inherently kind of doesn't work all that well. Not a fan. Waiting for Windows 10. Hopefully when Windows 10 comes out, it will be better. I've played with the tech previews, and so far it is better than Windows 8. Uh, at least it has the potential to be significantly better than Windows 8. It's what Windows 8 should have been. And I think Microsoft realizes this and realizes how much they've fucked up with Windows 8 because they're giving out Windows 10 for free to people who have Windows 8. <laughs> and Windows 7, but that only lasts for a year. But yeah, um, anyways, what was I saying? I totally forget what I was saying. Oh yeah, I upgraded to Windows 8 uh, and I installed Sizer, but Sizer doesn't work well with Windows 8. It tries to work, but I think there's a DPI issue. Like in Windows, Windows 8 is better at handling significantly higher resolutions than Windows 7 is. Uh, like it's in 4K mode, but the start bar is larger than it is by default in Windows 7. I didn't have to change anything. So it's auto adjusting its DPI based on the resolution of my screen. It's doing it itself, which I think is what broke Sizer because when I tried to set it to a lower resolution, it would, it would work and it would do exactly what I expected. But when I tried to set it to 1280 by 720, 
it would blow up the screen and fill the entire monitor. Well, the entire monitor was set to 4K, so yeah, Sizer didn't work. So I was sitting there trying to figure out how to get Minecraft to actually open up in a proper resolution. Now you might be thinking, well, the new Minecraft launcher does that. It has a lot of neat little functions, like you can set your RAM usage, you can set the size, you can set the working directory, all these fun little settings. Yeah, Minecraft can do that. FTB, Feed the Beast, can do that. Tekkit cannot. And I was trying to actually get my uh, Quest for Creative World up and running again. Um, so I was trying to open Tekkit that way. Tekkit does not have a setting for resolution. We can't override resolution. So I went poking around online and found that there is a text document that I didn't know existed in the Minecraft folder that has all of your settings in plain text. Well, two of those settings, which are not accessible in game, are override horizontal resolution and override vertical resolution. By default, they're set to zero, no override. Well, then I set that to 1280 by 720, which is normally my recording resolution, and open Minecraft. And it popped up, and I could tell that it was a different size, but it was still like this big on my screen. I couldn't play that. So I closed it, and I reset it to 1080, uh, 1920 by 1080, and uh, opened it up. So that was a quarter of my screen still too small for me to actually use the 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 smallest i can use in a window on that screen is 1440 which is just crazy for me okay this is a big jump this isn't like when i upgraded from my previous monitor to a 1080p monitor okay my previous monitor was a 720p screen that impersonated 1080 so it pretended that it could support 1080, but in reality, its native resolution was 720. But 720 to 1080 is not that big of a jump. 1080 to 4K, that's a jump. And I didn't have any of the in-betweens. I didn't have the 1440. I didn't have the 2K. I went straight from 1080 to 4K. So it's it's a bit nuts. <laughs> So that's taken some getting used to, plus the fact that it's significantly smaller. So it's the, it's the 4K pixels crammed into a smaller screen. Now, it's a pretty as crap screen. It's a really nice screen, and I really, really like it, but uh, it's making my eyes hurt. <laughs> it is. I've had to adjust a few things just to be able to actually see it. Some of the things don't adjust, like uh, Adobe Premiere, what I'm fiddling with Adobe Premiere. The text in Adobe Premiere is the same exact height in pixels. So on the screen, the text is microscopic. I can barely see it, and there's no zooming in in Adobe. Uh, now, I use an old version of Adobe Premiere, so newer versions might fix that problem, but mine doesn't, at least not as far as I know of. So yeah, serious fun recording. And I'm going on 30 minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up here. And I'm going to say to you guys, uh, you know, do the standard like, subscribe, and comment. I really enjoy comments. I like talking. As you can tell, considering I've been talking for, to a camera for the last half hour, I know I'm actually talking to you guys, but uh, to me, there's nobody around. It's just the camera. And my cats pop in every now and then, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, leave me comments. I love to talk. And I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.